Let's take a look at compute and factorial using recursion. And um, let's first talk about what a factorial is. Say we got uh, three factorial. That's um, one times two times three. So you you start with one and you multiply every number leading up to whatever's here. So one times two times three give us six. If I had five factorial. That'd be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times 5 is 20. So that'd give us uh, 120. The uh, oddball one is 0 factorial. Because how do you start with z uh, 1 then multiply all the numbers up to, to that? Well, 0 factorial by definition is just equal to 1. So this is going to be our oddball case we'll have to specifically uh, program in. Okay. Well, let's go over and see how our program goes. I'm going to do a file, new project, and I'll choose Java, Java application. And uh, I'll leave it that way. I don't save these source codes or anything. We've got our package name up here, um, and public class, or here's our main. And uh, NetBeans offers you a very nice way to figure out where to put your code at. Uh, it says to do uh, code application logic goes here. So I'll pre click at the end of that and press enter. And um, we're going to um, need to get information eventually. Um, so I guess I can go ahead and put the import up here. So we've got the import Java dot. Now notice when I do a dot pops up with the different uh, different choices. So if you have trouble remembering, then this is very nice. And we want to uh, choose the util dot and see it pops up with this again. If you don't remember the name, again you can uh, you can browse through this. Like this. And the one we want is scanner. Um, but if I did a down arrow, that's another way of browsing through it. You can see it goes down to here scanner. And then up here it pops up with um, what it does. A simple text scanner which can parse primitive types of strings using regular expressions. Um, blah, blah, blah. Probably a, little, a lot more than you want to see. even gives you an example. But anyway, scanner is the one we want. So I double click that or you can press enter on it. And then I do a semicolon. Now it comes up here uh, with a little red here. And if I put my um, I probably got something typed in wrong. Maybe it's a little bit too early in the morning. Import java.util.scanner semicolon. Oh, what am I doing putting it there? It goes up here. Import java.util.scanner. There we go. Now that is nice to show the, the red indicates you did something wrong. And um, when I code, I, I don't write it off of a script. Um, I do this on the fly. Uh, it's more entertaining for me to do it that way. Now I see a little yellow. And yellow is not something to be worried about. Uh, red is. It says unused import. We're just we haven't done anything with it yet. Okay. Well, let's go back down here to our main, and um, we're going to want to um, uh, get uh, a number from the user, and then calculate the factorial, and then and then print out the result. Okay, so I'm going to do a scanner, scanner, Y scanner. That's what we uh, brought in right up here, and then I'm going to give it a name. I always call mine input. They don't have to be called input. They can be whatever you want. Equals new scanner. And then you tell it uh, what exactly you're doing. And I do a system.in. Notice the uh, case here. All this case matters. Um, if I come over here and put a lowercase s, you see it pops up with red. And again, if I put a mouth over, <laughs> mouth over it, mouse over it, um, then you see that. Um, all the shows hints. Very nice feature. 
Uh, this gray here just says it's not used. So again, um, red is the, the key one you need to keep, keep uh, an eye out for. <coughs> well, um, we're gonna need to bring in a number. So I'm gonna declare uh, that. And um, we need to um, prompt the uh, user for the number. So system dot out dot and um, I guess we'll just do a print and we'll say um, input a number and then we'll say n is equal to input dot now we're bringing an integer so when I do the next See how there's uh, next byte, next int, next short, a um, whole bunch of ones here? You have to specify which type you're bringing in. So I'm going to say next int. Now I start to type in lowercase i, and then I did a tab to do a code completion. If I do a tab again, it even does more. And then I put a, a semicolon there. Um, so this is going to get an integer, and then return it to here. Let's talk a little bit about what all this is doing. Okay, the import just brings in the code for, for possible use. Um, Java by default tries to keep the program small, so it only brings in exactly what it needs. So that brings in the code. Down here, we're going to create a, uh, a new scanner um, called input. And uh, then we'll use the system.in, so we're gonna bring in information. The um, the idea behind this is you have a, if you've studied objects, ideas like you bring in, uh, create a, an instance of something. Um, you get mar married and have children. Um, your first child, you create an instance of a, a son, for example, and you, you're you giving him a name, uh, Eric. Um, you have another son. Um, you create another instance of a son, and Jack, let's say. Um, so that's kind of a similar idea. Um, we're not going to objects a whole lot here. But this right here, this input, is not, um, I'll use it a lot, but this is not just uh, what you write in here. This is a variable. This is what you're going to call it. Um, down here, you can think of it, well, this is another another variable. Again, th we'll think of the, all these as variables, even though they're, they're kind of object related. Okay. Integer means a number with no decimals. This just prompts the user, and there's no print print line here, so it stays on the same line. And then this, um, the input dot, well then this uh, is gonna call this particular code. This is code that's already written, um, so you don't have to worry about that part. It'll call that, and that'll retrieve uh, whatever is input, uh, convert it to an integer, and then put, we're gonna assign it to this variable here. Okay, well, let's just see what that looks like. So I'm going to do a system dot out dot print line, and then I'm going to put in my in. And let's run it. I'm going to click this uh, run project right here. You can also do run run project or just tap F6. And you see it says input a number. One thing you have to remember about the NetBeans uh, interface down here is if I start typing in a number now, it puts a number right up here. It's not what I want. So you have to click down here and then type in your number. So I put in three, press enter. And you see it comes back and tells me three. This is a very nice way to um, to test your code as you go along. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't wanna print it out. Okay, so we just got our number that we wanna work with. Well, now I want to to call um, the our recursion um, to calculate the factorial. So I'm gonna come down here. Now notice where I've clicked. I've clicked after the closing brace for the main. And if I click up here, you see how it puts both those in yellow. So that's kind of nice. So you can match them up. So I come down here and we'll have public static. And um, I might be tempted to put uh, int here, and I will to begin with. Let's see see what happens. And then I called fact uh, for the factorial and um, integer in. 
Now this in we're referring to here, see how that matches that variable up here? It doesn't have to. Um, I did that just to, to um, kind of see how they tie together. I always like to put my um, uh, beginning brace here um, just so they line up perfectly like that so I can easily see it. I don't like NetBeans convention of putting it up here. It's your preference. Okay, now we got our oddball case. Our oddball case is if um, n is equal to 0. In this case, I'm going to return 1. Else, and this is where um, the recursion comes in, we're going to return n times fact n minus 1. We'll talk more about this here in a little bit. But that's our recursion for factorial. So up here, what I can do is I want to um, I want to print out the results of this, um, and I could declare another variable. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it on this line. Answer. And I'll say answer is equal to fact in and then I'll say system dot out dot print line the answer was answer okay let's see if I have any uh, errors And I uh, should have cleared that before. I'm assuming it's sitting here waiting for me. Okay, so put three in and press enter. It says the answer is six. Okay, we're perfect. We run it again. I uh, put uh, 20 in here. The answer is negative such and such. This is the problem. When you start getting up uh, factorials, uh, it doesn't become um, too far down. Uh, down the path where it gives you weird results. And the reason why is the number becomes real huge. So instead of using an uh, integer for our answer, what we can do is we can use lon. Of course, then down here, we also need to change this to lon. Wait a minute, we're passing that in. Never mind. Just kidding. That's the integer. This, this one right here would be lon. Okay, now let's run. We still now we still can exceed it. I'm not sure twenty might be too big. Ah, that looks more reasonable anyway. Um, I'm obviously not gonna do that by hand to check it. But let me come here and put in five thousand. Answer was zero. You can see that even though we declared as long, it still doesn't uh, get around just exceeding the limits of the the, the number. But we're not looking at that part now. We're just looking at the recursion. Okay. Um, now let's talk about what this is doing. Let me run it. Let me put 3 in. And press enter. It says the answer was 6. Um, okay. So what we're doing is we're calling this, this um, right here. And we're passing 3 in. So... Our first time through here, fact three. Comes down here, n is equal to, if n is equal to zero, it's not. So it comes down here and it says return n times, now n is three, times fact three minus one, so fact two. So it's going to re do a return three times fact of 2. Okay, so this fact of 2, this is coming up here and it's calling this procedure again. So it's calling that again. But now our n is going to be 2. So it comes down here, it says if n is equal to 0, it's not. Uh, it comes down here, return n, which is now 2, times fact 2 minus 1, which is 1. So then it's going to do a return Two times fact. I should have short made this a little bit shorter. This fact and one. Okay, 
So then this fact one is coming back up here and it's calling this again. So it's calling itself. But this time n is equal to one. Come down here, if uh, n is equal to zero, then returns one. Uh, otherwise it does this. So it's gonna do a return. Excuse my writing. One times fact. And then we put one in here, we got one minus one, which is zero, so zero. Well, this fact zero right here is then calling this this again, except for now, n is equal to zero. So it comes down here, says n is equal to zero, return one. So this is going to return one. Okay, well, where is it returning one to? Well, it's returning one to right here, which means this becomes... return one times one, which is one. Um, so it becomes return one. Return one, where's that going to? Well, this is now putting that value right here. So this is becoming return two times one, because that's what the, this value is right there here. Which two times one is two, so this is now return two. Okay, well, where's that returning it to? Well, that's returning it to right here. So it's, it's coming back out of the uh, procedure. It keeps track of all of this, and then um, you know, calculate says you return these values. So this becomes return three times two. Where does the two come from? Well, it came from this return. And then three times two gives you your six, which is your answer. Now, the book doesn't do too bad of a job for explaining that. Probably better than I just did. Um, but it's sitting there calling itself over and over. Um, can you can you have problems with this? Eh, yeah, um, you can definitely. Um, uh, let me try to. There's a way to comment out the code, and I've forgotten how to do it. Comment. There it is. Okay, let's let's call this. Hopefully, it doesn't blow up a machine. But we'll try it. Try running it. Says input a number, and then come down here, put three in, press enter. Stack overflow. It keeps all track of all this in a stack. And um, since I uncommented those, then then what it did is it um, kept calling itself over and over until it exceeded whatever limits are set up for for that. Now I have no clue how many times that that was. It called itself over and over, but let's uncomment this. There it is. Okay. Now that's a that's an example of um, a recursion uh, for factorials. Very popular one for to use in books. Um, probably the most popular one because it's a lot easier to understand. Recursion is hard to wrap your mind around. How do you call something over and over effectively? Um, it's kind of a challenge. A lot of times you use existing algorithms uh, somebody else has already written to to kind of um, kind of implement.